Yeah. Okay. Um, so thank you, Ahmad, um, for joining today's session. Um, today we are going to cohort eight for this book club. We are going to cover um, you know, chapter um communicate, chapter 29 and chapter 30, which is all about quattro. Can you see my browser? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'm going to the first one. Um, we're gonna look at chapter 28, which is basically about you know um introducing quattro. Um, so quattro, as we all know, is um, you know, it's a new way framework used to basically design or I can say um to uh <clears throat> Let me okay. That can be used to uh write code and some kind of prose. So it allow one to have reproducible and you know it support many output format. So uh this is basically what uh, Quattro does. What is this? Um, okay, let me. Um. Okay, I have this chapter. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Quattro files are designed to be used in three ways. Um, for communication, communicating to decision makers. Um, so if you want to write document and share to decision makers, you can use Quattro. And you can use Quattro for collaborating with data scientists because you put the code, but this one may not necessarily lead the code. Um, but you can also use it as your day-to-day -day, um, you know, uh, lab material to do some stuff. Um but one thing we should know, they made mention Quattro is a command line tool, not an R package. So this is something that um, previously I didn't even know about. Um, I know I installed Quattro, not to use on people, uh, you know, uh, R package, but um, it just this chapter, I remind me that Quattro is not R package, is this. Um, one also thing we should know is that uh, Quattro is something that adds, extend the features and many more, add many more features to R Markdown. So you will see a lot of basic, uh, you know, uh, similarities. If you already know R Markdown, then you know uh, Quattro a lot. And going to basic of Quattro, so Quattro have three basics. Um, the first one is YAML header, the you know R chunk surrounded by these, and then you know uh, text uh, packet. So what does that mean? Um, this is YAML header. You can see that, and you can have you know chunks, and you can have you know text. It's just like normal R Markdown. So this is basically, you know, um, what it have, but how Quattro works. Um, this is a question somebody may ask, like, how does Quattro work? If you already know R Markdown. So the Quattro document, it does have the extension of QMD, right? But when you um, have a QMD document that Markdown and you need it, you click on NITA, the NIT R is um, R package uh, that tries to take, you know, um, uh, um, that takes this one to uh, change it to Markdown. So uh, Markdown, uh, then you use Pandoc now to change it to any type of you know document. So this is basically what is Markdown. So um, all the Markdown and Patro. So all the Markdown and Quattro. Um, R Markdown and Quattro are rendered by NIT R that changes to Markdown. So this is normal Markdown, not R Markdown. Um, yeah. Um, then how can we use, um, you know, uh, Quattro? So Quattro can be used in many ways. The first one is using Visual Editor. Um, so you can use Visual Editor such as what I'm using. And now um, you can use source editor. So clicking here will change you to use source editor, but I like also the visual editor using Quattro. Um, the next thing is code chunks. So um, you can have many code chunks we already know in R Markdown, um, such as eval, include, echo, message, you know, results and error. So this eval um, prevent code from being evaluated. Um, include, if you set the code chunk to false, run the code, but doesn't show the code or the result in the final document. So yeah, so it, this means the code is not included. Echo means prevent code, but not the result from appearing in the finished file. So this prevent the code, but not the result. But this one, 
um you know run the code but does not show the code or the result or the two so that's include um you know if you have include false and you go for message false or warning false prevent message or warning from appearing results hide the printer result and error cause the render continue even if the code run return an error so these are some of the code chunks we already know if you use R Markdown, but they are also, you know, um, the same useful in Mac in Quattro. So um, because we said uh, Mac, uh, we said that um, Mac um, Quattro has three, these three basics, the YAML header, the chunk, and also mix of text and formatting. Um, so Quattro has what we call global option. Um, so, for example, if we have a chunk, each chunk, we can put like echo files for each chunk, but you can have a global option where in the YAML, you can put echo equals to false. It means you don't need to put in each chunk you created. So this is called a global option. So if we want to, um, you know, include, we don't want to run the code. Um, uh, we, um, we don't want, we want the code to run, but we don't want to show the code or the result in the final document. Then here we can have include also false, include, then we can say false. So this is um, what we call global options. So this is useful if you want to, uh, you know, uh, do some stuff. Um, the next one is we have inline code. We already know this. If you are in using R Markdown, this is allow you to insert inline code. So here we have R like this, and now you can you know type some stuff code. Um, you can say n row um, as we have that. So that this will allow you to run um, you know R code. This is called inline code. Um, in Quattro also you can allow us insert figures. Um, any figure for JPEG and whatsoever. And the good thing is um, the way we do that using, um, you know, our Markdown still the same, but um, with visual editor allow you to insert quad image whatsoever, you know, figure, select figure and select it. Um, this make it so easier to insert figure or image in um, quad true document. So I prefer the, uh, you know, um, this visual editor to just insert, but also tables. So, much like the same we do in R Markdown, we insert tables. You can insert tables in, you know, in Jupyter, um, in uh, Quattro. So this is it. But we can see here, um, for example, um, yeah, we can see here this what it gives us, right? Um, this one. Um, but um, what we can see here, we can have a better looking figure, right? We can have a better looking figure. For example, here we can run this. Oh, I think. Um, this one. Cover, uh, what's this? Hmm. Let me run it. Okay. This run. Okay. I don't know why this cable, need uh, cable is not running. Um. But previously I run it, uh, I don't know why now it's not running. But anyway, what this is telling us, like we can have beautiful table, um, you know, something like this. Um, yeah, something like this, um, table. Um, so this allow you, for example, here we can see um, by default Quattro prints, you know, data. Ah, okay, the internet is bad, sorry, um, Ahmad. So, by default, Quattro print data frame and matrix as you see them in the console, something like this. But we can use a better way to, you know, uh, show them in a better approach. So this is called using Cabo. But there are many, you know, ways to show this stuff. Um, many, not only, um, is that okay? Not only that, but you can use different packages such as GT, this reactable cable extra. So, oh, okay, Cable Extra is also, um, you know, another package different from Cable. Um, it's called Cable Extra. It also has a lot of features that you can allow you to, you know, uh, do table and customize it. So these are some of good package to customize table. So then the next thing is caching. Um, so caching in Markdown allow us, you know, uh, to actually save us time to run many code at the same time. So you, if you remember, you can run some code 
but you, something values you change some value you want to rerun the code it if it takes you maybe 10 minutes previous code now if you change some small value and you run it it may take another 10 minutes so to avoid that you can cache some you know a uh, result and so if nothing change you you need not to run that that's what we have caching so you can see here in your you know uh yama you can put cache through so that's what we do so this is uh, the global but you can also do based on um you know uh, build on uh 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 chunk so you can see here we have a cache um true based on chunk so that's what it means you can have you know global and you can have based on chunk so when this set when when set this will save the output of the chunk to a specifically specially named file on disk on subsequent runs, it will check to see if the code has changed. And if it hasn't, it will use a cache result. So this really saved time to use this um, caching because you know it saved time to do the run. Yeah, Ahmad, it's interesting to do this caching stuff. Um, so about that is some issue, caching issue. Uh, the caching system must be with used with care because by default, it is based on the code only, not on its dependency. For example, here, uh, we have a data here. You can see I read a data, raw data. Now I have another chunk. So um, I read, uh, use this raw data, you know, do some filtering and now mutate and, you know, create this, right? Now, what happened here is that um, caching the process, you know, um, uh, you can see caching this data process means it will get run if the deploy pipeline is changed. So if the deploy pipeline is changed, then this one will change again. But it won't get run if read CSV call changes. So if this guy, this something here changes, then it means it will use the previous data, raw data. Even this one changes. This means that this code, if we want, even if this data changes, then the whole process is changing. So this means that we need to tell this code that this code is dependent on the previous code. Right, so that's what they have called. What they call uh, depends on. So here you can see we have cache, yes, true, but depends on what raw data, right? Depends on raw data. So because here is called raw data, we level this chunk called raw data. So if raw data this chunk change, maybe you read another, then it will you know rerun everything again. So that's uh, another one beauty part of it. Um. But also you can note that the chunk won't update if every large file also changes. So what about this? Um, so what this is means is that um, if this file changes again, not anything within this one, what will happen? So that's why you note that the chunk won't update if this file changes because the need catching only track changes within the QMD file because this file is not within the QMD file, it's within the folder Maybe you have the file, but um, how can that happen? So that's if you want also to track change into the file, you can use catch extra. So you can see we have something called cache extra. So you can see this is expression file m time. So you call this file. This means that when the file changes, also the whole things here changes. So this is something about caching that allows you to you know um, utilize your time efficiently without you know repeating the same code if you change some variable or even at the most even if you read a new file that is about caching then the next one here we have is yaml header so as we said um previously that a quattro involves yaml header for each quattro file it has a yaml header um then now here we use um you know um uh, we want to see what happens with quattro so Quadro is used control many details of the output. Um, here we'll have some stuff, self-content, document parameters, and bibliography. So what this means is that um, um, YAML header here can be used to control everything in this document, in Quadro document. Um, there are a lot of stuff you can uh, you know, control. The first one we see here is self called self-contained. Yeah, so it's called self-contained. So, HTML document typically have a number of external dependency, for example, image, yes, and by typical quattro place this dependency in underscore files folder in the same directory as QMD. So when you run, um, you know, uh, quattro file, so let me see.
Um, why is this is no opening? Okay, so what I want to say is that um, oh yeah, you can see that. So we have this file. So here you can see book because we are book. All the HTML of all the files, all the, you know, um, what we have, those TMD, we have this. So that what it's saying here. HTML document typically have a number of external dependencies. And by default, quattro places is dependent in a file folder in the same directory as QMD. Um, the resulting plan will be self -com. But if you don't want to, um, you know, create this dependency, you want to um, have, you know, a single file will contain everything, you can use what we call embed resources equals to true. The resultant plan will be self-contained such that it will need no external files and no internal SM to be displayed properly. This is one, another thing called self-contained. But we also have what we call parameters and YAML. So sometimes you want to, for example, you have the same document, but you want to maybe write, um, use the same document, but you want to write uh, address that document to multiple people. So we can use what we call parameters. So let's assume now, we, um, uh, see I have um, a letter uh, I have written that I want to send to 1000 people. Uh, what I want to change is only the name of those people, only the name of those people, but the, everything is the same. So can I use what, I can use what is called parameters. You can write the quattro document, everything, but inside this parameter, you can provide something that will replace each and every, um, um, you know, uh, yeah, it's like packaging dependencies. So you can replace everything. So let's look at this one. Quattro document can include one or more parameters whose value can be set when you render the report. You can see whose value can be set when you render the report. report. Parameters are useful when you want to re-render the same report with different values for various key input. For example, you might be producing sales report per branch, exam result by student, or demographic summary by country. To so declare one more parameters, you can use this field. So we can see here params, my class, you can provide something like this. And now, oh, okay, yeah, I run this guy. Okay, so you can see here, for example, I have this, um, oh no. Um, okay, 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 let me go to the book. Maybe I don't have the right code. Yep. So yeah, so this is the, the this is it. So here we can see here, we have class and um, we have SUV. And now here we can use something like that. We can say param, um, my class, you know, you are referring to the parameters, right? So this means that um, now you are given the class with different parameters. So this one may be uh, different classes. You have different classes. So it will assign to this. So at the end of the day, you can have a single plot with um, each and every class. Then another thing you can have is, okay, these params, you can have many other things. For example, the date, you can specify the date. You can have, you know, different format like this. Um, Another thing is bibliography. Um, this allow you to insert bibliography inside your document. And the best thing you can do is this. Um, um, we can add that using uh, whether this DOI, document object identifies, Zotero, searches, and every other thing. So for example, I think if you want to insert, um, you know, reference, uh, you can insert using R Studio, uh, I'm not sure where is in R Studio. Um, in search reference, mm. citation. Oh, okay, there is another one. Okay, so here you can see you have bibliography. You can have you can import from Zotero. You know you can import this. Mm. Yep, you can import from this. You can have cross ref. Oh, um. Oh, I link you. I don't know. Oh, it automatically detect uh, my library, my Zotero library. I didn't touch it. Oh, look at my papers. Okay, so you know, um, you can automatically insert, um, you know, uh, reference, uh, in your document, and this is the way you insert reference. So you put add citation. So 
you already have the key citation key and you put it here and so this is an example blah blah and this and it will and automatically now and you change the style you can put the style here you can change the style um you know uh like this csl and APS style this so this is uh uh bibliography in quattro it's simple at just using you know add and putting the citation key um finally um a workflow um so this um they just give some advice on how people can you know do some uh, data analysis the first one is record what you did and why you did it so when you are doing um you know because marketer um quattro can be used for data analysis as we said so what they advise is record what you did and why you did it, why you are doing analysis, regardless of how your memory is, you will forget it one day. If you don't record it, you do, there will be come time when you've forgotten important details. So the, uh, um, you know, recommend, you know, writing, you know, the step you do, support rigorous thinking. So what this is telling us is that um, uh, at the time you write, you know, what you are thinking, what you are doing the analysis, that will help you, you know, to, um, you know, to think along the way. Um, but also help others to understand. So when you, you know, um, write in Quattro and you write the pros and you do your analysis, when you share your document, other people can also understand it better. But also they give us uh, some tips. Ensure each uh, notebook has a descriptive title. Um, you know, we all know these, so name our notebook. Um, each YAML header provide the date that will help you to remember when the document was created. Um, if you are doing data analysis, even if you spend them and you made some analysis and you didn't get a good result, don't delete that one. Leave it at it is. Um, you know, why? Because if you delete it, you may go to the same route again. So um, don't delete it, leave it and write why it didn't work. Then the next time you will not be able to repeat the same mistake. Another thing is, um, you know, if you discover an error in data file, modify it direct. Don't modify it, but instead write code to modify the data. So this is also, um, you know, a good, um, you know, practice. Um, don't modify the data manually. Write your code to automatically do that. Why? Because um, it may correct other errors that you haven't seen similar errors. But if it is only one, you just select one and you correct maybe in the next one million, that is at the same error. So write your code to, you know, correct all the occurrence of that error. Um, before you finish the day, make sure you run that notebook. Um, if you are using cache, make sure to clear caches. So when, this one also allows, you know, uh, you clear your day, um, you start different another day differently. Um, right, so they also advise if you want to use, um, to be reproducible in the long run, use RM. So RM allows us to, you know, um, have reproducible, but it's not discussed much here. Um, yeah, so that's basically about this chapter. But the last chapter, if we go that, um, which is called, um, you know, uh, let me see what, okay, Quattro format. So this one is basically just telling us a different kind of format that we have in Quattro. So um, the first thing they talk about is basically, um, you can have, there are two formats, um, you know, to have this, a Quattro, just having this, um, you know, allow you to generate HTML Quattro document. So inside your YAML header, put the kind of document you want. If it's HTML, put it there. That is permanent. But that is transient by calling Quattro Randa in your, you know, in your terminal. So we, I can call Quattro Randa. I can put the QMD, the file, and now put the output I want. So, um, yes, RM is like VM in Python. So, you can render, um, you know, um, HTML using this format, or you can render using this at your terminal. You put the name of the file, and now output format. You can say docx. This will create, um, you know, docx format. But you can also create multiple format docx PDF. But you can also multiple ones. Um, you can create multiple by saying all. So this will create different kind of format PDF power was a different format that are available. That's um, you know, um two ways to set the output of a document in Quattro. So by using this, uh, you know, um, HTML. Okay, so 
but also you can set out the output options. Uh, the first one here, you can, you know, um, you can want to override the diff format, default format. So default format uh, does not actually, um, you know, you can see the default, um, you know, HTML and format is HTML. But if you want to have table of content, you can set it through. And if you want to have, you know, um, table uh, TOC float through, uh, this allows you to have your um, table of content to be float. Um, you can even have run that multiple output in this way. So for example, here yeah, HTML, all this through. Um, you can have this, the format is PDF, LaTeX, um, PDF is default, doc is default. Um, or like this one here where, where I have only video, uh, HTML, but if I want to have multiple format, you can see I have HTML, um, you know, PDF and doc. So, um, yeah, so if I want to do this, I need to do this. Ah, okay. One also good thing, um, I find it, uh, you know, uh, Quattro has, you know, you can see here in YAML, when I come here, you can see it has this, you know, um, allows you to select something that you want to, you know, all these options. So it, this is something good. So I just want to show us like, um, if you want to have multiple format, you can specify here. Okay, so to render all the document, you can use this one. Um, so these are all the document we have, PDF, .es, ODT, array, uh, GitHub format, um, Markdown, GitHub flavor, Markdown, and uh, we can have uh, IP1B, um, Jupyter Notebook. So this allow this is an this is not a normal Markdown, but GitHub fo flavor format that allow you to do other stuff. Okay, so that is what we have here um, in the that one. Um, but also, uh, this is what we already discussed. If you don't want to, you know, uh, show your code, um, for example, you are creating a code for decision makers. They don't need to see the code. You can put execute equals to false also in the YAML uh, header. Um, okay. So they also discussed that um, you can basically use, um, you know, um, uh, you can use uh, Quattro for presentation. So this allows you to do presentation in Reveal.js, PPT, Beamer. Um, different presentations. So you can look at more about that here. Um, also allow you to do some interactivity with um, Quattro. Um, this one allow you to use um, widget or other stuff to create this. So there are many packets that provide this, uh, this and this uh, allow you. Then finally, um, Shiny. Um, so Ahmad, this is your thingy, uh, Shiny. So in Quattro, um, you know, you can call shiny code from Quattro document. Um, I don't know much about shiny, but what they said is that, uh, um, you know, you can add server shiny to the YAML header. So this is what they said you can do, uh, to add. Quattro. So we will see more about shiny in our next book club, uh, how we can, how Quattro will be good to send about it. Yeah. So we can see that here, for example, library shiny, um, we download shiny and we have some, you know, document here, uh, input and this. So we can see this is something that we can learn more as you also said that for reference. Uh, shiny can you be used also for many other things like, you know, website and books. So for example, for website, um, um, for website, for example, I have a website here that I do for some of my, uh, um, community that I'm teaching them like R and other stuff. Uh, you can see this. So yeah, so this is a website done by Markdown. So you can see you can do um, a lot of other stuff with the R. So this is the website I did for the uh, some student that I'm teaching in my community. Um, yeah, free data science training. So you can do a lot with, um, you know, Quattro, you can do website, you can, you know, have books. If in fact this book, um, was done by using Quattro. So, um, yeah, so you can find more about, you know, how to create website and how to create books in, you know, um, Quattro, um, you know, page, um, you know, so this is a lot of stuff. Um, you can create website, you can create books and many other things. Uh, yes, so that's, um, you know, um, you can write journals, other formats, you can write journals, um, you can, you know, uh, format, you know, Jupyter Notebooks and many other formats.
Right. Okay, so that's the end of um, you know today's session. Um, it's a little bit um, not that difficult today. It's just something that we already know, for example, on uh, all the markdown stuff. That makes it easier for today's session. And uh, yeah, Hama, that's what I got today. And um, I think uh, I will put stop.